China is becoming the world economic leader. What does that, can you give us an idea of as that progresses, what does that look like on a day-to-day basis for the average American? Because, you know, you think, oh, China, you know, oh, the movies are, you know, but but what does that happen? What happens in my house when, how I raise my children? What happens specifically to, to families, to people when, as this process continues? Well, I think what you're going to see is a steady, you're already seeing it, but you're going to see more and more of a reconstruction of what China means. It's going to become an important part of our lives. Now, it already is in terms of the vast number of products sitting in our bathrooms, our kitchens, our living rooms that say made in China when you turn them over and you look at them. You've already noticed that. Well, The Chinese want to cement their dominant position, and they're going to do that, and they're already doing it, and it's going to impact us. Let me give you a couple of examples. I'll go back to the Hollywood example. No one making a film in Hollywood at this point is going to be as dismissive, as hostile towards the Chinese as they have been in the past. Why? Because they need the Chinese market. And they know that that's going to be harder to get into if you're saying nasty things about their culture or their political system or their leaders, etc. Our politicians still live in the old Cold War mentality. So they're out there beating the drum and they're getting frustrated because (coughs) they're discovering that their audience isn't isn't willing to go along with them. Uh, Here's the second one. More and more corporations are dependent on their business in China. We sell more cars, General Motors sells more cars in China than it does in the United States. They are not going quietly to give up the enormous investments they've made uh, to build these cars in China. They want to be able to continue to do that. China is a fast growing economy. Every capitalist knows you want to be where the economy is on the upswing and you don't want to be where it's going down. And their reality is we're going down, they're going up. And so they become an advocate for a very different relationship with China than that that is wanted, especially by Republicans, but by Democrats as well. This disconnect between the political system and the actual needs of the economy, that's almost always won in capitalist system by the economic forces, not by the politicians. And they're going to have to recognize it. And you're going to see, uh, here's a prediction I make with confidence. I don't know exactly when and how or who, but you're going to see politicians emerge who build their careers on this. I am going to work out a deal with China that allows us to do this and that, and there's peace, and and, uh, and we will be part of the growth that China has. And, and that will be an alternative to the people that are keeping knocking uh, the Chinese uh, because they think it's politically uh, attractive. A last example. There are Americans who honestly are concerned about how the Chinese are treating a Muslim minority, the Uyghur people. And there may be very important issues there. I'm not commenting on that. But for a country like ours that is still waging a 20-year war on Muslim people in Iraq, in Afghanistan, having killed way more than any reasonable estimate of what the Chinese have done in that part of their country, for us to be calling them out is extraordinary. I mean, the rest of the world looks at this and wonders what's wrong with the United States, not because they justify anything the Chinese are doing. That's not the question. That may be bad behavior that should be uh, called out for what it is, that should be stopped. But the United States is in a uniquely incapable way of doing that. And no Muslim, I can assure you, anywhere is in any way fooled. This is done for the American political mentality in which the United States is somehow clean and innocent and the rest of the world are misbehaviors which we are going to punish with sanction. This this arrogance 
is it's unbecoming to anybody, but a society in decline that acts that way becomes laughably ridiculous. And if you look at the comedic, uh, the comedians in Europe, they're making fun of us all the time because we make it so easy. <laughs> Professor Richard Wolf, host of Economic Update, Thank you so much for being part of this wide ranging discussion. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Juliana. And I meant what I said before. It's these kinds of programs, these kinds of conversations that are the best contribution I know how to make to help this society find a way out of the conundrums it now faces.